okay at this time we look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for taking us to bed and for waking up this morning, waking us up this morning in our right mind, and for bringing us here, Lord, we could worship you. We thank you, Lord, for giving your angels charge over us, Lord. May we could lie down and sleep in safety. We are here one more time to say thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, and we will want to say thank you every time we breathe that breath of life. Father, have your way this morning. Be the teacher, O oh God. Hide me behind the blood stain curtain and help us to put on our listening ears, O oh God, and to hear you speak to us, Father. Take full control today and bless us again. Bless we that are already here and the rest to come, Father. Take full control today. We ask God in Jesus' name and for thy sake. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now this morning, uh, we'll be moving into uh, chapter 3, still in verse 27. We saw the people came to John concerning uh, baptism. Last week we spoke about that. We saw where Jesus and John was in the same area baptizing. And a talk came up where jo uh, Jesus was baptizing more than John. Though Jesus was not the baptizer, it was his disciples. The people came around and asking some questions just because they did not fully know who Jesus was. And still they did not know who John was, though John was around for a little while. <clears throat> because we saw in the early chapters, when John came baptizing and gathering the people, getting ready for the church, that the people were somewhat confused and began to ask questions. John knew what he was doing, but the people didn't fully understand what John was doing. John knew he was on a mission for the Lord. But the people did not understand what was John's purpose doing those things that he was doing. And those things happen the same way to us when people see us come around, God witnessing or preaching the word. They ask, who are these people? Where do they come from? Who they are? What is the purpose trying to tell us what to do? Never realize we are servants of God and we are on a mission. Amen. Believers, we are here on a mission for the Lord. Amen. And the mission that we are on is very great. Some people never understand that the mission that they have is very important and is very rich. And sometimes people try to look down on us and sometimes try to even bow us down and we get discouraged. But I want to encourage us this morning. You have gotten the best in life. Yeah. We have the best in life yeah. and we must feel proud of what we have. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Lord didn't have to pick us, but he chose us. Yeah. And we must say thank you, Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. As I said, we saw the people came to John concerning baptism and the baptizer, but it was not all about it. It was about turning around from sin and turn to God and be baptized. That it was, it was all about turn around. Make a wrong turn. Repent 
and come to the Lord. And that was the real purpose of uh, John being around. Because he was the forerunner. Amen. He was uh, the preparer, or the one that preparing for the coming of the Lord. Because the mission John had was great. But the mission that Jesus had was greater. Amen. That's the most important part. It's like us. We are on a mission. And our mission is great. But the one that comes after us, the mission is much greater. And I pray God that the people that we're trying to recruit or encouraging them that they take it in and take it to heart, take it very seriously because it's very important. Yes, it is important. This morning I still not sure if we're going to close chapter 3. But then we will go in a manner to try to close up chapter 3. Of John. And that's where we are right now in 27. And we have 36 verses in chapter 3 of John. Amen. So then uh, with the help of the Lord we'll get there. Okay. John made it clear. John made it clear or made it plain again and answer. A man can receive nothing, he said in chapter 3 and verses 27, 28. A man can receive nothing except it is given him from heaven. And uh, this morning we look into Hebrews chapter 5 uh, verses 4 and 5. Hebrews chapter 5 verses uh, 4 and 5. We're going to do some reading and we're going to try to be a little quick. If we have the mic, uh, we'll do that. He said, you yourself, yourself uh, bear me witness that I am not the Christ, but I was sent before him. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. The glory is going to read. The qualification, qualification for high priest, verses, verse 4. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he also who said to him, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he also said in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Praise God. So we observe something right there. Whenever we come around, whether we are in the pulpit or on the street or any platform concerning God, we did not put ourselves there. You know, many times he said many run and the Lord did not call them. We have people around like that. They run, but the Lord did not send them or call them. But the real and true teacher, prophet, preacher, get that from heaven. 
from above. Anytime it is of the Lord's business, we did not just take it up on our own. We were sent by God. He said, even as Aaron, he did not take it up by himself, but he was called by God. Even Jesus himself did not go out bragging and boasting and saying who I am. But the Lord, his father from above, made it clear, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he got that order for Melchizedek. Amen. So uh, that tells us we have to be humble. We have to be obedient. We have to be godly. We have to be righteous. We have to quick to hear and slow to speak. Because the Lord, he called us for a purpose. And that purpose which he have called us for is good. It is a good purpose. It is a great purpose. And he has given us the best part. Amen. Amen. Also, in Malachi chapter 3 and verses 1, we read from there also. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. Anybody get, get it quick enough? We could uh, go ahead and read in. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. So it is clear, he said, I will send my messenger before me. Amen. I will send him to prepare the way, even as the gardener or the farmer would go forward and prepare the garden for planting. We saw in different verses and chapters where he said, one, do the planting, another do the watering, but God do the harvesting. Amen. He bring the increase. He put things in order. He make it bear. He make it grow. He make the fruit, fruit come forth. It is him that is in charge, not me or you. Amen. We are just the servant of the living God. Amen. Amen. Would you say that John the Baptist and Jesus are both messengers? Yes, they are. Yes. They may be of different ranks, or they are of different ranks. Not maybe, but they are of different ranks. But they are both messengers. Amen. It's like pastor and us. He is of a different rank, but we are all servants. Yes. Amen. Yes. And let us not jealous each other with the ranks that we have. Amen. Amen. But do it good. Do it well. Yes. With all your might. Do it with joy. Praise God. Praise. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 
Aleluya. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank
And that's why John said early on, I, he must, I must decrease, but he must increase. Why must I, he must increase, but I must decrease. In other words, I am leaving. He have just come and have began that mission. He's taken over from me because he sent me to prepare the way. <laughs> Remember the Lord said earlier on, somewhere in Matthew, he said, uh, when Peter and the others, when he begin to ask them questions concerning who he was, because a lot of them did not understand who he was. But uh, Peter knew who Jesus was because the Holy Spirit told him who Jesus really was. So when everybody began to say that, some people say you're a prophet. Some people say you are some other person. You're this, you're that. But uh, Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus turned and said, yes, Peter. Flesh and blood did not tell you that. Because flesh and blood do not know that. Because actually my mission is heavenly stuff. I am from heaven and no earthly man can understand the heavenly things unless the Holy Spirit tell him. Amen. So he said, Peter, the Holy Spirit told you, my father told you. Yes. He said, and upon what you have just said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes, yes. Amen. You know, when we wait on God and we listen to the Lord and we study God's word, the Lord will speak to us and tell us exactly who he is. Yes. He will tell us who he is. As I said, uh, there was joy in John. Here, yeah, John, he must increase, but I must decrease. I was just holding on until he come, and I am glad I never gave up because he strengtheneth me. Again, is the word that I place in. Amen. He said, I didn't give up. Because the one that sent me forward, he stayed with me, he strengthened me, he encouraged me, he kept me, he guided me, he provided for me. Imagine when John came, he was, his meals was locust and wild honey. That's what was his jealousy, the jealousy, so to speak. That's what delicacy, okay, better words. That's what he feed on, something that could nourish him. No matter John had so much a great voice without even a speaker. That man could have stayed on one side of the river, though the river was flowing so loud and people could hear him on the other side <laughs> because he was not eating, he was not eating junk. He was not eating junk. He was eating the right food. The right thing to keep him up. And brethren, because we are flesh and blood, we have to eat the right stuff to keep us going. Amen. Amen. When we can eat the right thing, especially what the Lord wants us to eat, we can do well. John feed on locusts. Some people say, me? Will I eat locusts? Probably wild honey, but not locusts. And sometimes I ask question, I, I, I question myself. Was John putting that locust over the fire? Was he preparing it as a food? 
or we know in those times God not probably doing much frying, but they used to do a lot of roasting. So I wonder how John ate that, but probably if we know what is locust clearly or that grasshopper, you just probably catch it and just skin it and probably pull out your guts. Probably, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> probably you were just dipping that in the honey and just eat that. <laughs> and it would digest. And it was good for him. And it was for a purpose that he would be able to speak. Yes, Brother, Brother Craig. Actually, uh, in the Old Testament, where God is talking in the law about what you can eat and what you shouldn't eat, locusts was one of the things that people could eat. So they probably roasted him. <laughs> It's true. They probably could probably they roast it. We don't know. But uh, there are certain things today people eat in without without cooking it. Uh, can anybody give me the name of that food that people eat without salad? salad. But there's a fish, sushi. sushi. Okay, sushi. sushi. They just all they do give it seasoning, a good seasoning. And it is a good meal. Some people would frop in using that. But some people go that eating that. They digest it properly and it helped them. But some people cannot stomach it. Some people cannot digest it. But I think the Lord gave John a st uh, yes, yes, Pastor. Yeah. So but the uh the king. Uh, who was uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, so you know that John did not live very long. He, he was uh, executed. Uh, and so he, he, that was his purpose. He's probably a very young man. I don't know how old he was. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I think that's interesting to me. Because his sole purpose was to usher in the king, Jesus Christ. And that was his life. And he was, then he was executed. Okay. Okay. That's a good, that's a good reason. Okay. Yeah, he was really preparing for the Lord. But after that, he had to leave. And the way of his leaving was to be executed. That's where... He lost his head. And many times certain things happen for certain reasons. That king believed it was him that really takes John's head. But that's the way John had to go. The Lord permitted that honor the Lord in order for him to go in that manner. But that's the way he had to die was to go in prison and where they would execute him. So let us, as Christians, be ready and see, come what may, Lord Jesus, I want to be a humble servant for you. A lot of people, when they read these stories, they back out. <laughs> Even when Jesus spoke and he said, uh, in order for you to be my disciple, you must drink my blood and eat my flesh. And that's where they back up. A lot of them back out. Me? I'm going to eat this man's blood, drink this man's blood, and eat his flesh? Not me. And they back off. Plenty of them take off. When the Lord looked around and he saw that some of them was leaving, Peter was still there and some more. He said, what about you? Will you also leave? Will you also go? But Jesus, but Peter turned around and said, Lord, where should we go? Where can we go? Nobody have what we need but you. You know? And when you know what the Lord have and what he give, you will want it. Amen. If you do not know who he is, and what he can do, 
and what he give, then probably you'd back off. But when you know he gives eternal life, he gives strength, he gives courage, he protect you, he supply your daily needs, then where else can we go but to the Lord? Nowhere else. He said in verse 31, he that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Amen. The people that serve in the idols and the gods that make with stones and brass and gold and silver would want to hear that, what we have just read. Probably they must have heard it but didn't take no notice about it or take heed about it. And that's why we should read it and read it loud that the world should hear. Because we have some intelligent people out there. Very, very intelligent. And I pray God that they honor my voice. They may be very intelligent, but not wise. There is a difference being intelligent or clever and not wise. When you're a wise person, or if when you become born again, you become 75% wiser than you used to be. And the Lord gives you wisdom and understanding and ears to hear him speak. When you are lost, the ears you hear is of the world. Because what you hear is earthly. But when you begin to hear the heavenly things from the one that is from heaven, then you take heed because you want to know more. More you get is more you want. More you hear is more you want to hear. More you begin to eat is more you feel that you want more to eat. You will never ever say, I have enough. Because the Lord made man in a manner just like him. Whoo, hallelujah. God made man in his own image and likeness. And God gave man the ability to take in, to yes. grab, yes. to grow, yes. to digest, yes. and to give. Mm -hmm. You know why we will never, ever have enough? Because we do not keep all what we have. Or we are not to keep all what we have. We have to share. Amen. Yes. We have to deliver. It's like a container it is like a fountain, not a fountain, but a cistern, as I love to say. As it receives, it flows. Because there is an inlet and an outlet. As it receives, is as it delivers. As it receives, is as it delivers. And everyone that is born again, that's who he is. Praise God. We are here for a purpose, and our purpose is good. Amen. Yes, Sister Graham. Why was John saying all of these? What was the purpose of him saying all of this when the, um, the people came and asked, tell him that, um, Jesus have more disciples baptizing than him. 
what was the purpose? Why did he go to such great lands to emphasize? Because what they wanted, he didn't have it. He was just an informer. John was an informer. He could just deliver what he had, but he did not have everything to deliver. But the one that is coming after him had everything that he needed. John was living, and he wanted to empty out because he was living. He did not want to take anything with him, but deliver everything that was given to him. And he knew that his time was short. Yes, it's a Graham. Okay. Um, I was looking at it. Okay. There are some people that all they are interested in is to know something and do absolutely nothing with nothing with it. Here, John, they had heard him before talking about the Messiah that is to come. Okay, so when this baptism was going on, that was the only thing that they were concerned about. Why? So John, John had to explain to them and tell them, well, there are some things that you have, you have to not question, but to accept. Because everything that you see and hear that the, the Messiah is doing, it was already said, and that is your business to either accept. So he's saying that they, they have been hearing all about the Messiah, and they refuse to um, accept his, uh, his testimony. So that's what is important. That is what John was saying. That is what was most important, is for you to listen and to receive what was being um, what was being preached, and not to just come and question people why why why, and we do that every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. Okay, we we have probably uh, another twenty minutes less than that. Ten. Uh, another ten minutes. <laughs> what can we do in ten minutes? Let me see. <laughs> Let me try. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try. I can try. <laughs> anyway, uh, as you write to Instagram, people like to ask a lot of questions and just talk, talk, talk. And sometimes the real stuff that is around, they even take it in. But what John was saying, it was already written in the word. Yeah. All they had to do was study the word and just go on and enjoy what was said. So when John come and is saying, and when Jesus come on his scene, it will be easy for them. Because everything, the prophet said it before. Moses and all the rest said it before. And how many, how many prophets they kill? By talking the truth. They kill many. By talking the truth. But then uh, as we move down a little lower. Uh... He is here. He have what I do not have and can receive and can give you what you need or your, uh, that what you need and what you are longing for, what your soul is longing for or dying for. Receive, receive it or receive him. He is from heaven. I am from earth. That's what John was saying. Here comes the one that he was longing to see come. Now receive him. I prepare the way for him. Now I am leaving. He will take over from here. And make good use of what I, I told you. We have a few scripture verses. I'm not sure if we're going to use all. It seems like I... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go to Craig. Okay. 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 
Meanwhile, yeah, so when you said that, um, I was thinking about, you just said what the Bible says, John came to prepare the way. Because um, I think in Isaiah, it says uh, it was a prophecy about John coming to prepare the way before Jesus comes. But anyway, when you just mentioned that prepare the way, it made me think of a farmer has to till the ground and dig up the ground and get it ready to put the seed in. He can't just go out and start throwing seeds if he wants to have a decent crop. And so uh, I just wanted to share that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's good. That's what happened. That's what was happening. John was killing the soil and getting it ready that the Lord would do what he had to do when he come. Now I, what have I'm not sure if we can be able to take everything, but uh, John encountered some things on his way. He encountered, it was not always easy for him. There were some rough times. He encountered a lot. And uh, we just remain a few more verses. I don't know if we can have them cover up all, but then we, I want us to look at uh, Matthew chapter 22. And if it's that we can really do before we complete, then <laughs> we will have to take, take up the balance next week. But Matthew 22. Verse 2 to 13, and Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 to 27. So uh, two different persons can look at those. The first person take Matthew 22, 2 to 13, and the next person take Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Matthew 22, and Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parable and said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged the marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their way. One of his own farm uh, uh, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he went out. His armies destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servant, bind him, bind his hand and foot, take him away and cast him into dark, outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Do we get it? That's, that's what we have to preach. 
that ought to be our preaching. Amen. We will go out and tell the story and ask people to come in. Some will come and some will not come. And if some that come will believe that they don't God a favor, that they can come how they want, the Lord say, no, not so. Not that way. You better repent. You better turn around. You better give your heart to me. For you will suffer the consequence. You will not enter heaven. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But then uh, before we close, we're going to close now in a little while. Let's just take, no, I, I could give more, you know, more thing on this one, but then we have to move down. We have to really get to uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25, 27. Somebody read that. <laughs> Although, to be honest, uh, I, uh, when I look it up, I think we should take from a, uh, 24, 5, 23 to 27. Please, let's do that. Ephesians 23 to 27, and we'll have to close there. Five. Ephesians, anybody have the mic? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 to 27. And read clear. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. Now, uh, if we look at those verses we have just read, now, uh, if I had just taken from verse 25, it would be the husband alone. But then, uh, even as I saw it, I think the wife also have a part to play. <laughs> the wife have a part to play in that chapter, not the husband alone. We saw submit, some, some submissiveness there. We saw obedience there. But the main thing we saw there was love. Love. Love was the key word. But a wife has to be obedient and submissive. The husband ought not to be a bully. But he ought to love his wife as the Lord loved the church and give himself for it. Now, uh, I'm not sure if I heard everything that I study, but probably the Lord don't tell you that uh, there is no man that does not love himself. Every man ought to love himself. So he ought to love his wife, even as the Lord loved the church and gave himself for it, that at the end, he will be able to present the church to God or to himself with a spot and a wrinkle. Okay, uh, we probably just remain two more verses or three more verses, but we'll take it until next, take the next week of life spared. We'll close that up so we can close up the chapter. Now, uh, it would be important that you could really close it up, but then uh, I wanted to touch that part of verse 35 and 36. Oh, verse 34, 35, and 36. We we'll take that next week of life spirit. Amen. If we do that way, we then we know that we eat everything. We don't leave the food on the table. Nobody like 
you do. Nobody likes to prepare a meal and you do eat it. The wives know about that. Never let the wife prepare a meal or anybody prepare a meal and you just walk away and leave it. You need to eat all and digest it and enjoy it. That's what we do in here. That's why you find that we, we're taking so long on one chapter. It is not about running. It is about understanding what the Lord has prepared for us. Amen. Did you enjoy that part? Yes. Amen. So let us be ready and wait for the coming of the Lord. And while we are waiting, the main thing we've got to do is to occupy ourselves until he comes. You hear that part? Occupy yourself until he come. When we can occupy ourselves until the Lord come, we will not, he will not cast us idle, but we always have something to do. Let's pray.